I guess, you know, it's very true. We off for a very good start of the year, both in revenue growth plus 4%. EBITDA plus 14%. And if you look at net profit, we're up plus 60%. So wonderful set of results, I must say, despite a few, you know, like still COVID impacts here and there, but we've managed to compensate them, uh, both in winning new contracts, uh, as well as uh, efficiency measures and cost cutting. So a really good start of the year for Veolia, certainly. What does this mean for the outlook? I see that you are basically ahead of your 2021 objectives. Do you think that your current guidance is conservative? I guess, you know, uh, there may be a little bit of room uh, for beating our guidance eventually, but we already, we are only, you know, at the start of the year. Uh, So let me, uh, let me uh, still, you know, have a little bit of of cautiousness here, although it's fair to say that we we may have a little bit of room uh, to beat that. I I must, I must add that, I must add that. Sorry, I was about to say that I must add that I was particularly pleased as well by a win of new contracts we've we've seen throughout the uh, the beginning of the year, uh, which will have an impact later in the year and next year, such as the very, very good contract in Japan uh, with uh, Miyagi, uh, which is a very big win, 800 million backlog. Uh, so that's what I wanted to point as well on top of the very good result of the quarter. Uh, I was going to ask you, Estelle, about the tie-up with Suez. Um, you have to present some of the details uh, of the final agreement by May 14th. You say you hope to uh, finalize the merger by the end of this year. We've heard uh, there will be different players, in particular when it comes to the new Suez. Ardian, there was a white knight in the previous months now has walked away. There's rumors that Ramondis from Germany might be in the game, Meridium, Gip. So can you just give us just a sense of how these talks are going and with all these different players? So the talks are really going in the right direction and we're very confident we should sign the final agreement you know, by May the 14th, uh, confirming everything which was uh, already approved by both board on uh, April the 11th, uh, which is first and foremost, of course, for me, uh, the uh, birth of the new champion of ecological transformation around Veolia, which will be a 37 billion turnover, and of course, we'll gather some key assets in Suez, uh, which we really had mentioned from the start. So we are uh, about uh, to double our sites in Latin America, to have a plus 50% uh, increase in our site in the US, uh, double our size almost uh, in Australia, and almost the same in the UK. So you see, we have a great uh, uh, opportunity here, which is crystallizing through this uh, agreement, and I'm very pleased. With regard to the new space, which still be uh, uh, as well, you know, um, uh, be uh, left as a big competitor of Veolia, number four uh, probably on the market uh, as we speak, a seven billion turnover uh, new space. Uh, there are a lot of discussion uh, amongst the various new shareholders of uh, this new Suez. Uh, which, you know, are around, you know, as you mentioned them, uh, GIP, uh, the Caisse des Depots, uh, as well as Meridian. So they are discussing uh, among themselves, which is the perfectly uh, normal thing to do. Uh, and uh, as far as I understand, they're quite excited to be the new shareholder of this new space, as well as, again, on Veolia, 37 billion new champion of ecological transformation.